Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then the life could ever be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on Him. Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There is only one way yes, to touch yes, him. Yes, O God, help us, O Father. Just believe when you call on His name. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on Him. Given light to me, praise his holy name. Through God's ministry, the truth that set us free is given light to you and me. He's given light to you, he's given light to me. Praise his holy name.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who this message will proclaim? Who will crucify the Spirit? Who will take on Jesus' name? Who will come and follow Jesus? Who this message will proclaim? Saints for the Friday evening service of the Gospel in the Church Puna. It's <clears throat> once again good to be in touch with all the saints of God. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. The reason why I think so, this song that lets us know the reason why our lives are still the same is because we have not yet touched the Savior. We have not had a had an encounter with the Savior. When we have an encounter, when we touch Jesus in our spirit, our lives will never be the same. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful honor, it's a great privilege that God allows us uh, to get in touch with His Son. What a wonderful, uh, wonderful, you can say, uh, uh, privilege it is that, that our Heavenly Father uh, chose to send His Son uh, to to die uh, for to save us from our sins it's a wonderful privilege and that's what we were looking at on Wednesday night I believe the scripture in Hebrews 11 and verse 40 that God has provided some better things for us that's why he sent his son who showed us the better way who showed us you now the new and the living way once again it says in Hebrews a new and a living way it's not the old and the dead way it's a new and a living way and Jesus showed us the new and the living way. And we need to follow the footsteps of our Savior, the footsteps of our Messiah. Uh, whenever the people go uh, to visit Israel, I believe, they say, let's walk in the footsteps of Jesus. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's okay. But that's not what it means to walk in the footsteps of our Savior. To walk in the footsteps of our Savior means we live like Jesus lived. We 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 uh, we move around. We we have we our conduct, our conversation, our lifestyle is is becoming more and more like Jesus. That's that's the crux of Christianity. That's the very uh, very core. If you touch the core of God's uh, God's plan for man, that's the very core to uh, to get us back uh, to follow. Uh, to follow his son and to be conformed to the image of his son. And the more we live in this dark, perverse world and this dark and perverse generation, 
it's it's becoming very difficult if you are still if you and I we are still living in the in in, in the carnal flesh uh, it's, it will be very difficult to follow Jesus and uh, because there are so many things going on in the world there are so many things we see around us there are so many things we hear there are so many things that that happen uh, and and there's so many things that we see on television and on the internet and on the mobile phones and we hear so many things that it's very hard to live as a Christian right now. And Jesus, uh, when the disciples asked him that, Lord, tell us what will be the sign, the sign of your coming. Uh, it's in Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25 is where Jesus speaks about the end times. Now, this is just before he, he had the Last Supper with his disciples after this I believe they went to the upper room um, to have the Passover but before the Passover uh, this was this is this is what Jesus spoke to them uh, his disciples in Matthew 24 and uh, verse 3 and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign, the sign of thy coming and of the end of this world or the consummation of the age? What will be the sign? Um, how will we know that your coming is drawing near? And uh, Jesus answered the first thing he says, like, um, and since we need to be prepared for, for the coming of our Savior, we need to be prepared. You may say, oh, there's still time. But the scripture says, don't you know, you fool? What if the Lord requires your life tonight? Well, if Jesus may not come uh, for the world uh, or to establish his kingdom per se uh, tonight, but Jesus can come for you and me tonight. So are we ready? So every day we live, we need to live as though it will be our last day on this earth. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And are we ready if the Lord comes for us tonight? Are we ready? And that's what Jesus answered and said to them. The first thing, the main thing uh, that will characterize the last days, Jesus says in verse 4, He says, take heed. That means give all uh, diligence. Don't, uh, don't goof off. Don't uh, go to sleep. He says, take heed. Be, be diligent that no man deceive you. He says, deception is going to be the hallmark of the end times. Take heed that no man deceives you. The last days will be the days of deception. More than the days of the past. This, these days that we are living in right now. And the days that are going to come ahead. Deception is going to be the hallmark. And, and people by the thousands. Millions I say. And I say I, I'll even go ahead and say billions are deceived every day. Uh, they don't even know, they don't even understand that they are still living in, in, in sin and they, 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 uh, they are just going through the form of religion but they, it's, it's, it's not touching Jesus. It, Jesus doesn't even know that. And to avoid deception, how can we avoid deception? How can, how can we give heed to it that no man deceives us? How, how can this happen? Well, the first thing that we need to understand to avoid deception is that we need to read the Word of God. It's, it's, it's good that we pray, it's good that we fast, it's good that we go to church, but reading the Word of God, because it is, it is the only scriptures, the, the words that are written in this book, saying, this is the only scripture that is God inspired. The scripture says, God breathed. It is the breath of God. And if we want to live spiritually, these scriptures must be like breath in our lives. It's only by these scriptures that we will be able to breathe spiritually, to live spiritually, to be in touch with our God. And it has to be read. It has to be meditated on every day. It's not that I read the Bible last week. It's not that I read the Bible uh, two days back. It's not that I read the Bible three years ago. Well, this, this, uh, uh, I don't stop breathing two days back. If I stop breathing, I'll die. So if I stop taking the breath of God in me, I'll die. And God breathed into Adam, the scripture says, and Adam became a living soul. Well, 
God does that even today. If we want to live after the spirit, if we want to live carnally after the flesh, it's okay if we don't read the Bible, it's okay if we spend time uh, goofing off. But if you want to live after the spirit, if you want to be led by the spirit and walk in the spirit, well, we need to read the, uh, the word of God. We need to meditate on the word of God. Uh, the scripture says in Psalms 1 that on his word doth he meditate day and night. That's, that's, the, that's the characteristic of a godly man. And that's what will help me when I am tempted or when I am in problems. If I read the scriptures or if I meditate on the scriptures and if I study the scriptures regularly, that's why Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself, uh, thyself approved unto God. If I study the scriptures regularly, then in a difficult situation, the right word comes up. The Holy Spirit brings up the right scriptures for me to take strength, to draw strength from. See, it's not that when I am in trouble, then I go to the scriptures. No. No. My, my mind should be filled with scriptures. My heart should be, should be filled with scriptures. I, I, need to, I need to fill up my mind with scripture so that when I am in trouble, when I am going through my trials, I don't go to the Bible that time. I, I, I still uh, read the Bible, I'm not saying that. But if I'm outside and if I'm in a situation where I don't have the Bible physically with me, well, that's when the Holy Spirit takes off, the, takes, takes the sword, uh, and the sword of the Spirit is called the Word of God. How will the Holy, how will the Holy Spirit use the sword if the sword is not there? Well, so that's why, that, that's, that's the time in a difficult situation, the right word, the right scripture will come up from in our hearts or in our minds. Because our mind is like a computer hard drive. See, whatever you put in the computer, will, uh, that's the same thing that will give you the answer. See, if you don't feed anything in the hard disk, nothing's going to work. If you don't program your computer, it's not going to give you the desired output. So, so and the output is given, uh, it, it depends on what is put in. So what goes in d d decides what will come out. If there's nothing inside, nothing will come out. And our mind is like the same thing. If, if there's junk in, junk comes out. If there is spiritual uh, thoughts and spiritual words in, those will come out. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit picks up the right words at the right moment of temptation. We, we have that example of Jesus when the Satan tempted Jesus uh, three times. Jesus responded with the right scriptures. He didn't tell them, wait, let me go and get my Bible. In those days, it, they, no one even had the Bible. And, but I believe Jesus studied the scriptures from a very, very young age. Because we know he, hem he emptied himself of all divinity. He had, to, he had to live a normal life like we all live. He had to go to the synagogue, he had to study the scriptures, he had to, you know, he had to memorize scriptures and he had to implement scriptures and I believe he, he did that. Now, he was not like the other children who went to the synagogue once a week maybe or once a month but I believe he must have gone to the synagogue regularly every day and asked the rabbi to read the next chapter the next chapter if he had some doubts he would have asked the rabbi what does this mean and he would have discussed scriptures with the rabbi and that's how his mind was filled with scriptures his, uh, he, he, he was a man that was led uh, that read the word of God and meditated on the word of God day and night and in the moment of temptation when the when the devil came and tempted him the Holy Spirit that was given to Christ picked up the right right word to resist the devil and it's a wonderful thing saints to know the scriptures and this is what is going to help us in the last days wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times the devil is trying hard and and is is somewhat succeeding uh, in, in keeping the current generation away from studying the scriptures that's what I can see the devil is somewhat succeeding he in keeping the uh, in keeping today's generation away from reading the Bible. Uh, he doesn't mind if they go to church. He doesn't mind if they, uh, if they uh, get a good job or uh, if they help around in the church. But when it comes to study the scriptures, he, he doesn't want them to study the scriptures because he knows there's life in these words. Because there are too many distractions today. Uh, there, is a t there is television with hundreds of channels. 
I remember when I was young and growing up, we only had one channel on the television. And that too, uh, it used to only start in the evening with the news. And then um, once a week uh, or something like that, I, I don't remember, we had, we had some daily soap, uh, weekly soap. It was not daily soaps that time, weekly. And uh, we had to wait uh, till all the family comes together and maybe watches the television together for that one hour. But now it's 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 on 24 hours. Uh, I have a I have a I have a choice what I'll watch and what I shouldn't watch. Uh, I have a choice. I'll record something if I'm not at home, uh, so that I can watch it when I come back later. But no one thinks about uh, going to the archives and listening to the messages later. No one thinks about that. But if I miss something on television, I'll ask my family members to record it on television so that I can watch it later. Well, see, that's deception. It's not sin, but it's deception, it's weight. Uh, like we saw the scripture in Hebrews 12 that, that put lay aside every sin and weight that that so easily beset you. It's a weight that, 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 that keeps me from growing in the Lord. Anything that keeps me from studying the scriptures, even though it's not sin, it's a weight. It's a weight. And I need to lay aside those weights. If it hinders me from growing in the Lord, I better lay aside those weights. And Paul said, I discipline my body. I bring it under subjection. Where well, are we doing that, saints? That's what the word of God teaches. You know, when I'm giving too much time to the world, when I'm giving too much time to the mobile phone or to the internet, uh, does the Holy Spirit bring up a scripture that discipline your body? Bring it under subjection. Don't give in. To those demands of the flesh, am I am I dying to the to, to self? Am I dying to the world? And am I dying to sin? Well, that's what that's what the word of God helps me to introspect myself. How can Paul said? How would I know that that stealing and killing was a sin unless the law said it was? Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not kill. Well, how can I know that? That, in, that the friendship with the world is enmity with God if the scripture didn't say so. And that's what it is. Too much of television, too much of mobile phone, too much of internet is friendship with the world. It's not sin, it's friendship with the world. And friendship with the world is enmity with God. I better be enemy with the world rather than be an enemy with God. And the devil's devil succeeded, saints. He's, he's almost succeeded, but... But, but God can still, God can still bring you young men and young women out of that. If only he sees the desire in you that, yes, Lord, I'm tired of this wicked world. Help me to come out of this. If he sees that desire, it's only a desire saying that God wants, wants us to have. When desire cometh, there's a tree of life. And the Lord will help everyone. Who wants to walk with him? He'll never reject a soul that wants to walk with him. Even though that soul may be a, 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 a sinful soul. But when the Lord sees the desire that that, that that man or that woman wants to get away from sin. He'll provide the grace necessary to overcome the sin and to rule over it. That's, that's his promise and he never lies. The reason why we are still in sin and still living the same way and still being deceived Believe me, saints, it's because we do not have a desire to come out of it. If we show God the desire to come out of it, He will, if, uh, he will help us. Take a step, someone said, and God will take ten steps towards you. That first step of desire is what God wants to see in the hearts of young men and young women in our times. It's enough goofing about in the world, it's enough... The career is important, education is important, but God is the most important thing. There's nothing important than God in this world. And, and, and I hope that we all through this pandemic have understood this, that God can use anything, even a microscopic virus, to bring this world to a standstill. No technology, no mobile, no internet, no television, no scientist on this earth can bring or mitigate what God wants to do and since the the, the more I uh, the more I, I, I receive the word of God the more I 
uh, I'm in tune with God's word and I align myself in, with God's word doesn't help me in these last days. So, so if we don't overcome the temptations and if we don't uh, read the word of God, I think we won't be prepared for what's coming in the future. I'm telling you, I'm not here to scare you, but what's coming ahead uh, is, is, is way, 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 uh, it's going to be way uh, difficult than what 2020 was. People will think 2020 was a, was, a, was a fantastic year compared to what they'll see in the future. Right now, everyone wants this year to go by soon and enter into 2021. But there'll come a day, after a few more years, mark my words, people will say, 2020 was a was 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 a good year compared to what they they will face and since we need to prepare ourselves for those for those days and the other thing that we can do is to avoid deception let's let's turn to second thessalonians and paul talks again about about deception here in second thessalonians uh, when he says in verse 1 onwards he says now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit or by word or by letter, as the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So this falling away, we, we um, put the scripture and we apply the scripture for the first century church that that the first century church had to fall away and apostate and the man of sin, the son of perdition had to be revealed and then the end is will come. That's true. That's true. But if you, if you use the duality of scriptures and if you, if you take this falling away, not just for the early church, but, but what I felt when I read this scripture is that there will be a falling away of Christians from the standard of God's word in the last days. Christians that claim themselves to be a part of the body of Christ will fall away from the standard of God's word and they will leave the things and, and, and there will be a falling away of many, many brothers and sisters that claim themselves to be a part of the body once upon a time. Because this scripture has to be applied even today. If this scripture was just for the first century church, then, then I think this scripture doesn't make sense today. But I believe personally that there has to be a falling away and there will be a falling away. And we see that falling away. We see that all over today that little by little, little by little, the commands of scriptures have been eroded. You do not see many, very many Christians applying scriptures to their life. We only see Christians as per convenient. Convenient Christians. We, we do not see disciples anymore in this world. Even in the church, there are no disciples. There are, there are only namesake Christians, but disciples, you can't see them. It's very, it's a disciple is a very rare sight nowadays. You know why? Because there is a falling away. There is a falling away. Hundred years ago, even a nominal Christian was better or behaved better than a tongue speaking Christian today. Hundred years ago, think about it. A nominal Christian, hundred years ago, with who just went to church regularly and, 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 there was not too much of truth in, in his or her life. But a nominal Christian 100 years ago will put a tongue speaking Christian to shame today. Because there is a great falling away. And this is the falling away that I believe is one of the signs of the end. One of the signs of the end. Then Paul goes on in verse 9. <clears throat> he says, even him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all power of signs and lying wonders. This, this is again deception. Uh, miracles in the last days. See, particularly in the last days, uh, and if you see particularly in the last 40 or 50 years or so, much there is so much of talks just on healings and miracles and gifts. Truth is not preached. Just healing and miracles and gifts are, are, are preached. But Christians, and, and the, 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 the worst part is that people who call themselves Christians are being deceived. 
And the ones who don't know the word of God, I believe, are the ones who are deceived. The ones who don't read the word of God and don't meditate on the word of God are the ones that are deceived. When you see something done in the name of Jesus, how can I distinguish whether it is true or fake? Just because some person is standing there and uses the name of Jesus and does some healing uh, gimmicks there, how can I know whether whether that, that, that thing that is happening there is true, is genuine or is fake? Oh, how can someone heal someone in the name of Jesus and, and, and can be fake? Well, it's not my words, it's, it's Jesus' words. We'll come back to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, but let's turn to Matthew 7. I'm not, I'm not telling anything uh, from my uh, uh, grey matter here. I'm, I'm quoting the words of Jesus. That someone can use the, uh, the name of Jesus, someone can, can, can speak the scriptures and quote the scriptures and someone can heal people. But it will all be a fake. It will all be, uh, it will not be genuine. Not because I am telling it, because Jesus said, said that. He says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, He says, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, I command that sickness to leave in the name of Jesus. Not everyone that says in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But who? But he or she that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. These are Christians and Christian leaders that he's talking about in verse 21. He's, he's not talking about Hindus and Buddhists. He's talking about Christians and Christian leaders. Verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy, in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name, whose name? Whose name? In thy name. They didn't use the name of any other gods, pagan gods. They used the name of Jesus. All call themselves Christians. These all, the many that is there in verse 22, call themselves Christians. And they call Jesus Lord. But Jesus said, I never knew you in verse 23. This is the part of the great deception, saints. And why did Jesus tell them to depart? You know why in verse 23? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Why? Why did Jesus say, uh, depart from me? You know why? You, work, you that work iniquity, because they practiced because they worked iniquity. Whatever they were doing in the name of Jesus, even though it was, it was done in the name of Jesus, it was iniquity. And the iniquity that was that that Jesus uh, that that Jesus hated and asked them to depart from the iniquity was their life, which was still being lived in sin. There was sin in their lives that they never dealt with. And this scripture teaches me that, 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 that in that day when God makes, makes up his jewels, the most important thing will not be my ministry, it will be my life. The most important thing that will be evaluated is not what I did for the Lord, is what the, is what, how much, how much of Christ-like I live. That will be evaluated. These people boasted about their ministry. These people boasted about their miracles and, and healing and giving money to orphanages and, and giving money to missionaries and sacrificing and evangelizing and praying and fasting for 40 days and giving alms to the poor. These people boasted about their missionary. But all these don't, don't all these things, all these boastings don't count on that day when our lives will be evaluated saints. Our lifestyle is going to be evaluated, not just what we did. Yes, whatever we do in, uh, in, in all our works will be, uh, will be evaluated, but our works will be evaluated for the rewards. And, but our lives will be evaluated for, uh, for, 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 uh, for, 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 for eternal life. See, our life, my life, how I live my life is more important. Because if I live right, I will do right. And the thing that is done with the right spirit is more effective than the things which, things, things which are done with the wrong motive. We need the heart, we need the source, the heart, 
the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked who hath known this the heart needs to be changed the source of my doing needs to change if the source is changed then the doing doing will be more effective but if i do good with the wrong motive that's not that's not going to count but but on that day what matters is who you are how are we living not just what are we doing but how are we living how did we live our life and sin in our life needs to be dealt with this teaches me that that a man can live in sin and still do miracles this scripture teaches me i am not talking anything from my own head saints this scripture tells me that there are many men even today that do miracles but they they are still living in sin jesus acknowledges their work he didn't say oh you liars none of you healed none of you did some miracles none of you prophesied he didn't he didn't he didn't he didn't uh, call them liars he acknowledged their works but he still rejected them because of sinful living i depart from me because you live sinfully is the life that we live is what will matter on that day and the ministry that we do must come from a life of purity or else it will count for nothing it will just be something that is done in iniquity see see let's come back to second thessalonians now second thessalonians second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved say when he says they might be saved that is saved from sin maximum major times whenever the scripture talks about being saved is 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 saved from sin and verse 11 the most scary verse it says and for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God deceives the ones. Who does God deceive? It says in verse 10, them that perish because they received not the love of the truth. And for this cause, because they do not love the truth, because they do not love the truth, that they should be saved from their sin and they like the life that they are living in sin, God will deceive them, not some man. It's one thing for man to deceive saints, but if God sets his heart to deceive us, no one can help us. And it says, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. But if I love the truth, if I love the truth, truth not only about the scripture saints, but is the truth about myself. If I love the truth so as to be saved from sin in my life, God will protect me from deception. That's what the scripture also tells me. Or else God himself will send upon me a strong delusion so that I will believe a lie. And God will allow me to believe that I am, uh, I am born again. There are many, very many people that think they are born again. There are many, very many people that think they are converted. There are people that think they received the Holy Spirit when none of them, none of that is true. I may think I've received the Holy Spirit. I may think I'm converted, but it's just a delusion. And this is scary, saints. It can happen to people sitting in Gospel Assembly Church, Pune. I'm not talking to to anyone else. I'm talking to the local church here. That's that's my first responsibility. This can happen to the local congregation that they think and we think that we have received the Holy Spirit. We think that we are born again. We think we are converted. But because we do not know the truth, God says believe a lie. Believe a lie. And they, this is scary. It can happen to, to us. And we, because we did not, re, did, did not receive the love for the truth. Let me give an example. If God's word shows me my fault, and if I don't receive it, if I if if this God if God's word shows me some attitude that is sinful, and if I don't admit it, that means I do not love the truth. 
That means I do not do not want to receive the truth about myself. I am in a dangerous position, saints. And if I try to justify myself, because if the law, when when the when the word of the Lord shows me, oh, this is not the way you would have you should have spoken that day. This is not the way you should have answered that brother or that sister. This is not the way you should have been rude to your wife or uh, rude to your husband. And if I justify myself. If I say, oh no, uh, but 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 um, but she instigated me and he instigated me. Oh no, I justify my wrong conduct. That just proves that I don't love the truth. And when I keep justifying my wrong conduct, and when I keep uh, uh, keep uh, justifying my wrong behavior and my sinful living, and I don't want to admit. That yes, it is me, O Lord, that have sinned against thee, and thee only have I sinned. When I don't admit that, and I keep justifying my wrong conduct, God just draws away from me. And what happens is, there is a strong delusion, or a working of error, the script, Santa Column references. There is a, there's a working of error that God sends, and he says, it's okay. I will no longer correct you. Just believe a lie that you want to believe. And saints, if if I am in that situation, I I I I really rarely have a hope then. See, if God allows me to believe a lie against myself, see, and there are a lot of Christians that 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 sad that I'm sad to say that. That are, who are living in delusion. There are a lot of Christians because they do not love the truth. They don't accept it. When they are when they are confronted with the truth, they don't want to accept it. But 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 they'll keep coming to church. They will keep giving their offerings. They will keep bringing their tithes. They will keep doing some odd jobs around the church. But when the when they come face to face with the truth, they do not want to accept it. And this is the most important message saying that needs to be preached today. But tell me how many men are preaching this message. Even today, I think I'll continue this next time. How there are men that are just preaching. Look up the internet. How many men are preaching about sinful living and turning to God and, and living like Christ lived? Even today, people are preaching, oh... The worst is over. There's a blessing that's coming on, uh, coming to you on on its way. Just believe and receive the blessing. And you know what? People believe it, and people send them millions of rupees. That's nothing but deception. But where the truth is preached, people don't want to hear those those, those messages. People don't want to hear. It. Many people will will turn this message off. Yeah. Without, before it gets over. You know why? Because truth hurts. Truth is, 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 is it, it disrupts my life. Truth is disturbing. Saints, but I need to love disturbing truth. Because that will help me to stay away from deception. So let's read the word of God. Let's meditate on the word of God. Let's, 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 uh, let's go and, 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 and to the word of God daily. What is the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning? Where does our hands go first? Does it go to the mobile phone as soon as we wake up? Or where? Or does it go to the Bible? What is the first thing we check when we get up from our bed? Well, let's all answer that question to our, our own self. The first thing we need to we need to reach out to is like when a blind man, I think so, when he gets up in the morning, the first thing that blind man will reach his hand out is for his white cane. And since we realize that we are spiritually blind and we need to receive that spiritual eyesight every day, the first thing we will do when we get up in the morning is go and run to the word of God. Not that cursed newspaper. Go and run and open the word of God. Dive yourself in the word of God. Immerse yourself in his word. And that will help you to live through the day. Otherwise we are just deceived. We are li living lives of just pleasing the pastor. 
as that pastor died for you on the cross. We might deceive the pastor saints, but we can never deceive God. Let's love the truth. Truth doesn't only mean Daniel and Revelation and truth of the doctrines. No, not that. We might receive that truth, but when the word of God shows me truth about myself, I might reject it. I need to love that truth more. The truth about myself, when it is revealed to me, I need to love that. I need to love that man that reveals to me the truth about myself. Not who preaches itching your messages. Let's get our, our thinking right sense. Let's get the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Christ. This, these 66 books are the mind of Christ. What's here? Let's get the mind of Christ. Amen. Thank God for a church. Thank God for a Friday night service. I, I don't I think that I have, I have crossed my time limit, but we'll continue this lesson. Maybe Sunday or sometime else. But, but thank God for a church. Thank God for this service. Thank the Lord for speaking to us once again tonight. I, I hope and pray that the Lord blesses these words to our heart saints and, and the enemy doesn't take away these words from us. But let these words have a deep root in our hearts. Let's think about this. I think we need to spend at least 10, 15, 20 minutes every day thinking about and uh, when I say thinking, I'm not talking about that, that Eastern meditation and all those uh, things which are nothing but devilish. Talking about meditating on the word of God and aligning my life with the word of God and see whether I am in line with God's word or am I drifting away? Am I falling away? Am I falling away or am I walking with the word of God? We need to do that every day. Otherwise, we will be deceived. Left, right and center. We will be deceived. We will think that we are someone when we are no one. Paul said, take heed if you think you are somebody, but you are a nobody. See, we, we, let's not deceive ourselves. Let, let's not allow people to deceive us and let's not deceive ourselves also. So let's ask God's wisdom and understanding and let's show Lord God the desire that yes Lord, I want to change. Let's show him the desire. Stretch forth your hands to the Lord and he will gird you. He will lift you up, saints. You'll see that change happening in your life. That woman with an issue of blood, she just desired in her heart that I will touch Jesus today. And she pressed by that crowd and she thought within herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment today. And you know what? God answered that desire when he sees that. When Zacchaeus, the wicked uh, tax collector, had a desire to see Jesus and he climbed up upon the tree. Jesus waited for him and called out his name and went and, 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 and uh, had some snacks at his home. You know why? Because that wicked tax collector had a desire to see Jesus and he, had, he wanted to change his life. Since let's show God that desire and he will provide us the strength to change. Amen. Thank God once again. I won't take much more time. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to ask the Lord for our spiritual eyesight. Otherwise, we will be deceived again. Let's ask the Lord to touch our eyes of understanding, our ears of understanding. Let's ask God to anoint our ears that we may hear the truth and accept the truth. And let's pray for that. That's more important prayer than any other prayer that we pray for. Let's pray for our spiritual health and spiritual life first. And let's also remember the, all the prayer requests. Let's continue to pray for, for the ministry, the churches in the body of Christ, the saints that are suffering from COVID-19, wherever in the body. Let's ask God to touch them and heal them and be with them. And also let's pray for the local church uh, here, here in Pune and the saints of God here and the elderly saints. Let's pray for them all. And let's not forget to pray for Brother Mr. Senji. They have sent their greetings to you all and they have 
asked for for our prayers. Let's pray for them. They're praying for us. Thank God once again for this service. Let's continue to pray for the church work. It's it's almost 80 percent complete now, and and I think we can start services from next weekend. So let's pray that the Lord helps us and makes a way. And thank you all you saints, local church saints that have helped us and the church with our offerings. Let's continue to support the church with our finances and may the Lord bless you all. Amen. Let's all pray. Thank you, Father, once again for this day, for this time that you've given us. Once again, Father, to, to study your word and to seek from, from your words, O oh, Father. Lord, and as you warn us regarding the deception that are, that's out there in this world, Father, give us more of your understanding. Touch our hearts. Lord, open up our blinded eyes. Lord, we want to see the truth. And when we see the truth, Lord, we want to love it, Father. We want to have, we want to receive the love for the truth that when we are confronted with it, we won't reject it, Father. We won't justify our sinful conduct and behavior, but we will yield to that truth and we will accept it, Father, and change. Change me, O Lord, from the creature that I am. And we will change, Father, and to the image and be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us, Father. We need you, Father. Let, 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 let the desire come out, of, come out from our hearts, the desire to be like him, to be like Jesus is my plea. Father, help us, God. We need you, Lord. Hold our hands and lead us as we walk through this dark and perverse generation. Lord, you be with us. Help us to shine as your light, not just with our words, but with our lifestyle, Father. Be with us once again. Bless all the saints of God here in the local church. Bless the saints of God throughout the body of Christ, the ministry, the weekend services throughout. Bless brother and sister Sanjay, cover them and keep them, Father, and uphold them in your precious hands and be with each and every one of us. We once again thank you for everything and we commit our going and commit this weekend in your precious hands. Be with us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.